Good afternoon, YouTube. We're in uh, springtime now. Uh, update on my car. I got a radiator. That Isis, Isis, whatever. The cheap crap, but it's still it's a radiator and it's going to work and it's pretty thick. It'll be better than stock, which is over here with a whole bunch of dirt on it. <laughs> Looks like I've never washed it. And then I got my AC. I pulled the air conditioning out. Um, I think I had built a how-to video on how to do that. If I find it, I'll upload that as well. Um, it wasn't too hard to remove. I didn't. I couldn't remove it all in one piece uh, myself. I mean, maybe because I was just lazy, but uh, I ended up taking it off of the firewall there. And in doing so, of course, it's going to leak out. And officially, it, on YouTube, on the internet, I vented it properly and got rid of all of the 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 gas legally. So so there. And. Uh, I don't know, I've got a few things laying around I might not use yet. But anyways, where I'm at right now, um, i got the engine sitting over there, waiting forever to go in. It's uh, it's pretty much done. Uh, I just need, like, belts, and I have to I have to figure out the power steering. Apparently, uh, Doc Race is saying i got to modify my power steering bracket. That's great, you know. But, <laughs> you know, those guys are more into SR manifolds and stuff that's going to bring the shop uh, more revenue. You know, the KAT guys, we're not going to end up uh, being a major source of revenue, so they don't really cater to us like uh, other people do. But uh, there's the engine as it sits right now. Uh, excessive sump down there. I got the Isis, Isis, whatever, uh, oil pan, the larger sump on the bottom. I hear that I can't use a front sway bar with that, like a front, uh, like a larger one, like a white line or what have you. Um, so... I'll see if I can get access to one to try to prove that theory out, but uh, I can see it when I look underneath the car that, yeah, I probably won't be able to. But uh, there's the engine as it sits right now. Um, anyways, this is actually a how-to video on how to remove the um, front bumper. So it's going to be a couple different videos that I'm going to end up merging together here. Uh, first things first, I'm going to take this off and show you what I've already taken off here just on the one side you got your plastic pieces of, uh, of junk really is what they are you can buy these in automotive stores for replacements if you snap them so don't feel too bad um, got a couple I think they're eight millimeter let me check no oh, those are ten got a couple ten millimeter um, screws that went in where my side skirts were down here. I just got the side skirt sitting off at the moment, as you can see. So there's a couple 10 millimeter screws that I had in there. It might be different for your car too. It depends on what its history is. But basically, you're going to want to follow up the uh, the fender like here, 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 like right next to where the fender is. Um, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe I'll grab a flashlight. But there's going to be a whole bunch of little screws that hold the uh, fender liner to it. Two, three, four. I got four of them that size, one a little bit larger. So um, let's take a look here. This is the fender liner itself. Mine's got a bit of a hole in it. I had a bit of a disaster at one point in the past. But uh, there's the right hand fender. This is the side that's facing out. That is the front of it. It sits in there. And what holds the inside in is the uh, little tabs. They kind of push into the uh, the fender. These are the little cheapy plastic tabs. So after you get it screwed into the uh, to the outside of the fender, I guess I can't really call it the outside, but on this lip, then you got some that are on the inside. That's where the plastic ones are. So screws outside and uh, plastic tabs on the inside. Now, next step, um, i got to make this quick here because I'm going to run out of battery. I'm going to do that to the other side, remove that as well. But uh, in here, you're going to want to remove... Two 10 millimeter from there, two 10 millimeter from here, and then uh, we'll get underneath the car for a second. Depending on uh, well, some of your guys' setups here, there is a uh, this little piece that sticks. This is the side of the car. Um, this is my, you know, what do you call it? Front lip that's staying on here. On the inside, in front, behind your. Uh, fender liner is this little tiny bar here. It's nothing really important. All this does is hold the, the bumper out 
So you're gonna have to go in here. There's a 10 millimeter in there. I mean, or you could take it off on the bumper itself, but I'm gonna just take it off and pull it out of the way so I don't end up bending it or anything as a late time. Um, other than that, there is the core support and everything. I'll get to that later on uh, when we go to remove that. But that's just uh, what I have so far. And uh, another thing I know as well is um, on both sides, there's going to be a couple little dowel points. I can't remember if it's three or four, maybe five in this area here. So just be careful when you do pull the bumper off that you're not prying against the paint or anything stupid like that. It looks like I may have done that before. Um, that was kind of dumb of me. But anyways, that's, uh, I guess, the first step of the uh, removing the video. Or, sorry, removing the uh, bumper off of a uh, S13 240SX. Mine is a 91, but this that bumper is a 91 to 94. Cheers. Okay, just finishing up on the one side here. I'm going to show you guys a little trick here. Uh, this is, it doesn't matter where this is. Oh, we got a crack in the front lip. Huh, anyways, this is the uh, front left side. Not that it really matters too much. But uh, what I normally do in situations like this, like you'll see up here, I just pulled this. This is that bracket that kind of holds the side of the bumper on. Um, what I do in situations like this is I'll pull this out of the way and so I don't lose the the uh, the screw that held that in or try to figure out among the pile of screws afterward which goes where. I'm going to thread that back in there. This is probably, this is kind of a tip that I learned when I was working on the oil patch. Some of you guys already knew this from working with your parents or, or with your old man in the garage or whatever. But uh, something like that, just a little tip, keeps it out of the way. Um, and in the spot that you know you're going to need it later on. Um, you know, same thing is going to happen. I'm going to really go and put, uh, I guess I won't be putting the screws in the side here. But uh, these two right here and here, I'm going to actually go ahead and put those back in. As well as, uh, um, actually these ones are probably going. Because what I'm going to have to do is on the uh, 91 to 94, um, I believe to remove the front bumper, I have to remove this piece off of here as well as this in this case the front lip so it all detaches because this is attached to uh here if i remember correctly i'll get the light in here yeah yeah the front bumper looks to be actually attached right onto the the side of that there so hard to see on the camera deep in there i got one actually a couple of the nuts are missing <laughs> Go figure. Anyways, I'm going to have to take that off. But yeah, that's kind of the tip that uh, that I've, I've learned is put the screws back where they belong and uh, you won't lose them. Cheers. Okay, update on the bump bumper remover. Blah, blah, bumper removal. Uh, up inside the fender. Uh, let me show you maybe on this side. I took out this air box, okay? I don't need this anymore. I think I'm going turbocharger, but that air box, there's a little thing that's stuck up here, and then I believe this is where the box sat. I can't even remember anymore what it looks like, but <laughs> the actual box itself would be up here. That other box, the secondary box, is in the fender underneath there. Um, sat kind of right in, in here, sort of. Um, attached to that, uh, where is it? That bolt right there, or screw, or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, anyways, I've removed it out to access on this side. I'm gonna try to film this in here a little bit better. Inside, behind your uh, side skirt, not really, sorry, uh, the uh, front lip and side area of the bumper, you've got, uh, a couple spots along this area on the inside that uh, if you take a look in there those are basically what holds the uh, front bumper on um, I got it separated a little bit here you can kind of see on the outside um, let me grab the light a little bit better there is uh, those little dowels I guess you'd call them in there 
And of course you don't want to scratch the paint, you want to separate them there. I'll show you what the, uh, what the nut, sorry it's a nut that holds those on. The dowels are in the bumper itself. This is what, uh, what they look like, front and back. And uh, they're 10 millimeter. There's uh, several of them. I lo it looks like I'm missing a few, but that's probably the case with a lot of 240s. Anyways, that's part of it. The other part was the top, and I've taken those off. I haven't put them back in, in there yet. I will after I get this off. Uh, I just have to find out underneath where the... Uh, it looks like there's... Like it's holding on somewhere underneath there, so i got to go in underneath and see where it's holding on. Shake it around a whole bunch. Um, I will say that normally on the front lip, um, whether you have the lip or not, there's actually this little opening here. That normally has four bolts in it. Mine doesn't. I don't know why. I guess I maybe forgot to put them in or something. But uh, that area, there's four of them. I'll show you from the top because from the bottom you might not be able to see them. So we'll go up top here. Like taking a look. Going in, see there's two there, and two over there. That would hold your uh, little plastic bumper piece on there. I think it might be ready to come out, it's just a matter of manhandling it, but uh, I'll get back to you, tell you what there is. Oh, by the way, there's also the, uh, the lights too. Of course the wiring harness um, has some lights, so you got to unplug those, get them out of there. And uh, usually you just uh, twist them off, pull. There's another one you got to kind of pinch and pull out of there. Be careful not to break them if you want to keep everything good. But uh, that's another thing as well. I'll get back to you. All right. Well, looks like uh, another spot of, of screws that hold the front bumper of a 240 on are uh, located just in underneath. If you take a look up, there's one, two three and four fourth one is out um that's just a it's a little tiny metal bracket that pinches your plastic crap urethane whatever it is up against your core support and it's not necessarily needed uh, it all depends on what you plan on doing with your core support some of you guys that are turboing like me might uh might not keep it, but anyways, um, that's the, uh, the, I think that's pretty much it that's going to hold that bumper on. I have gone ahead as a safety reason, I forget how heavy this is, but it's probably not that heavy. I have put one uh, screw back on each side at the top just to keep it held in there while I work on the bottom because the last thing I want is that to just come down on top of me and it's just going to be annoying. I don't want to scrape it up that much either, so I'm going to be repainting it anyway. I guess it doesn't really matter, but yeah, so that's that should be the last four and then pull her off. Okay, I figure I might as well let you guys kind of watch what's going on here. It's uh, going to be a little bit off center. I, I got this held up on a pegboard, so whatever. You're going to have to make do. Watch what I'm doing here. I apologize. I don't really look awesome. I have gained weight too, so I'm not exactly some really uh, in shape kind of car guy. I'm just a guy working on this car. So let's get this done. I got those two that are still on top, and uh, now I'm just working on the bottom here. I'll try to make this quick for you without breaking anything, including myself. See, that's the second one off. Here it is. Uh, the third. I also apologize for this headlamp. I know it makes me look kind of retarded, but it's so much easier to see underneath the car rather than having to tie up one hand. I'm sure some of you guys can relate to that. Alright. Here's the plastic piece. Right here. And it's going to sit back there for now. That should be, maybe, all that's holding the bumper. Okay. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at you. 
through tube. It looks like there's a couple 10 millimeter uh, nuts on each side too. That kind of go up into the fenders, front left and right fender. Here, bear with me here, I'll try to show you. I'm gonna go down in underneath the car, and I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see this. We'll, uh, we'll try here. There's the camera angle. You can't really see what I'm filming, but if you see where that spotlight is, there's one there, another one there. So we'll take those off, and uh, and then we'll get to uh, pulling her off. I think it'll come off then. It seems to be pretty loose right now. That's where I'm at. So I'll be back in a second with another video. Okay, YouTube, I lied. Um, those bolts that go up on the sides, they just hold the front fenders on. So if you're taking the fenders off, cool. Like now we know where those are. I'll forget about them. That's why I make videos. Um, too much uh, drinking beer. I forget a lot of stuff. Anyway, the bumper's ready to come off for the most part. I got one side kind of sitting a little loose. I'm going to be a little bit careful with that as I grab uh, my pry bar. Here's my pry bar. And to protect the paint a, a little bit here, I'm going to put some paper towel around it. And I'm going to get in there. <laughs> now this is the part where it would be nice to have a couple people. Uh, unfortunately, my wife doesn't like working with me. She thinks I'm too mean. So, um, I can take it off, I think, at this point here. I'll just throw that down. Now I see the things I forgot. I forgot to unplug the lights. So, take that off. Take that off. This makes it very awkward when you create little things like this. See, because now I've got those wires and I... Oh, let's try this. One man show. It's another video on YouTube where like five guys doing this. You know, sure, it went a lot faster, I bet, but I'll show you that anything's possible with enough will. Okay, that's not gonna work. Ah, that's not good. So, now, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's definitely not good to be letting it sit like that. Okay. I always make fun of 240 guys for having zip ties all over the place. This is my karma, I guess. I hope you guys don't mind looking at my uh, my rear end here. You guys probably like that, don't you? 
Okay. for seconds because I need both hands for this. <laughs> so I've just illustrated what not to do. Um, it looks like I didn't bust the wires, I just broke the tab off that holds the light in, which isn't a big deal actually. I don't really care about that. Okay. So, now, I mean, granted, if you had a bumper with paint on it that you cared about, this is probably not the best way to do this, what I just showed you there. So, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pry this guy off. Ah, hell. You guys don't need to be watching from back there. Okay, so as you can see, this is pulling up on these wires, which isn't good. Um, I unplugged the light out of them because I didn't want to actually completely destroy it. Over here, the little tab that holds the wire on broke off, and I don't care about that. That's not a big deal to me. But yeah, I mean, granted, you do want to do it right. Uh, I guess we can take the... Um, maybe we can't take that off like that. Got to man up, take it off maybe a little bit later. Anyways, that's the way not to take a bumper off, what I just showed you there. Um, I'm going to go through a review here in a second once I get that tab or that wire unplugged off there. Okay, uh, review time. I've uh, I've actually illustrated what not to do. Oops, that light's still on. Okay, I've illustrated kind of what not to do with uh, taking a 240 bumper off, and uh, you know, obviously unplug the lights first before you start prying it off. Have a couple people help you out as well. Um, I can't, uh, yeah, I can't stress enough. It's better to have a couple people, even if they're kind of brain dead, retarded friends. You know, we all have them. Um, most of my retarded friends are back in BC. They probably won't even see this. Um, anyways, yeah, now for going through and explaining a lot of the hardware that was involved with this. Okay. Big pile of uh, nuts and bolts. I'm going to take off, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight of these nuts, D's nuts. And uh, looking, there's our 240 bumper. It's standing upright right there. Um, so I don't lose any of the stuff. I'm going to go ahead and put it back on there. This is the, you know, best way not to lose anything. So you're going to have these. These are little 10 millimeter nuts that hold the fender. Or, sorry, the bumper to the fender. And I've only got a few of them here. Oops. Put that one in down there. So four on that side. Four on the other. <clears throat> Kick my transmission. Okay. So I'm going to put those back in there. And, you know, usually it looks like there's a few places that this could thread in, as well as there's a couple of dowels on here, too. Um, you know, space them out if you only have a couple of them. A couple on the top, a couple on the bottom. Keep it so it balances out help uh, prevent any fender gap or whatever. And where those plug in is uh, right here on the side. There's a little flare extra piece on your later model 240s. It makes the illusion that it's a little bit wider. It's a little plastic piece of crap attached to the fender. Um, 
Then there's our core support. Our uh, core support there is basically what keeps us alive when somebody, or actually when we do something stupid and re rear end somebody. It's a uh, crumple zone, I guess you could say. Something that uh, something that helps uh, in, a, in the case of a car accident. Now you have your lights. You obviously want to unplug your lights first, like I mentioned. Um, I have the signal and daytime running lights, Canadian daytime running lights. So one, two, three, four, two on each side. And the fender liner, which goes up on the inside. My right and left are just kind of hanging there. Um, I really, I like these things because they keep road wash from getting in around the engine bay. But generally on the uh, the upper top left, like if you're looking, if you're like sitting in the car, upside facing out, you're gonna have screws. And then inside, you're gonna have your plastic points. The screws, um, I'll show you what they look like. They are these, uh, there's I think four or five each side. They're just a uh, little tiny basic uh, Phillips screws. And what happens is the fender liner goes on the opposite side of your little metal tabs. And then these, um, they screw into them. Like they go up inside and your metal would be on the opposite side, the back side of this. Then your screw even further beyond that sandwiches it in there. And they screw into these. This is where the thread is. It's on the actual fender liner itself. Other things you can access when you have this off here is uh, your horns. I mean, I got a horn there and a horn there. Your headlight motors and things like this. That's the easy time, the best time to access a lot of this crap. What I'm going to be doing from this point on is I'm going to be hacking away in here. This is, uh, those three braces there, they're part of the core support. I don't need them. Um, I'm going to be doing a uh, V-mount setup, I think, with my uh, radiator that's sitting over there. I'm going to put it in on an angle, sitting lower, and then intercooler up like this. Kind of looks like a V, you know, well, more like a Pac-Man going along, but whatever. You'll see pictures if you look on YouTube, or sorry, well, yeah, YouTube, as well as uh, Google, Google Images. You can find pictures on uh, different setups. A lot of it requires a little bit of fabrication. I got my welder right there. It's actually a stick welder, which isn't really good for this, but uh, it'll work. So I just got to make up a couple brackets and uh, get it on there. Then, you know, then we go about seeing about getting the engine in there. I'm kind of getting sick of looking at this thing in my garage. It's got to, I got to get it in the car and get it going, you know, but, uh, anyway, this is the, uh, this is how you remove a bumper off a of 240. Sorry, my video is a lot longer than other ones that are out there. But then again, I kind of like to show you as I'm doing it in a lot of cases, like I've taken that bumper off before, you know, I've, sanded and painted it but it was like a year ago two years ago almost so i can't even remember what i did but now that's how you take it off you know i relearned how to do it in the process i teach you guys that's all that really matters is uh helping out if somebody's stuck so you know rate comment subscribe if you guys ask questions if you guys ask questions on youtube usually i answer the best i know how i'm i i've learned it's not worth it to uh to make make up BS and lie on the internet. It's just something I don't do anymore. I will tell you my answer. I will tell you when I have an opinion. If you don't agree with it, then you know, fine. You know, whatever. If you got a better way of doing this, that's okay too. I mean, whatever works for you. You know, I'm just uh, showing what worked for me. Uh, even though I did drop, drop the bumper on the ground, and it's all obviously better to have a, a couple other people here too. But uh, that's where I'm at, and uh, have a good day, guys.